the audience. I would remind everybody you have three minutes. Uh, we ask that you abide by the rules of civility. Dennis Curry. While the splitting of the lots raised some concern, it appears that the need justified the revision. In the plan discussion, the question was asked why certain conditions were proposed, and the transportation staff responded in part that Yebra Road is on the major streets and scenic routes plan, and we're concerned about the number of access points along such a potentially major street. The Southwest Infrastructure Plan, SWIP, completed in November 2007, referenced in this rezoning request, is an evaluation of the infrastructure needs for a 70 square mile area defined as Tucson Mountain Park North, Mission Road East, the Hannah Adam Nation South, and Sendario Road West. The plan was also provides criteria for evaluating the sustainability of the area planning efforts. A few of the land use sustainability goals and principles outlined in the SWIP call for a compact, mixed-use communities that create walkable and bicycle-friendly neighborhoods that only attract employers providing long-term living wage jobs and transportation options, but promote a strong community where individuals, families, and neighborhoods thrive safely from generation to generation. One of the plan's purpose statements calls for ensuring effective citizen participation in land use and development decision making, providing community-based access to quality health care, education, government, and retail services for all, and fostering a spirit of place that respects the heritage and traditions and celebrates our richness and diversity as a community, as well as builds partnerships with local municipalities, state, and federal governments, and other organizations in order to achieve a more complete community. I'm here this morning to convince you that Star Valley meets these criteria, if only given a chance. Yebra Road runs directly through Star Valley and will serve as one of the main thoroughfares through our wonderful community. The need to resist releasing the approved plats for Black 4, 7, 8, which will provide for 572 new homes, is not only perplexing, but is certainly not in Star Valley's best interest. On several occasions, we've been counseled by county officials that retail follows rooftops as an excuse as to why businesses haven't located here. The Star Valley Specific Plan and the Southwest Infrastructure Plan suggest the county to start out development in this area and to restrict that growth at this juncture seems counterproductive on several fronts. For those of us who have invested heavily in this Your, area, your time has elapsed. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome to submit that and your comments to the board and the board, clerk of the board and we will post them. Oh, I'll count. You were a sentence chart. I'll go finish. <laughs> uh, basically, all of this lap is so that I respectfully request that you and the board please consider this. We need this to happen. <coughs> and for those veterans here and their families, I would like to say thank you for your service. And for the veterans, welcome home. Thank you. Thank you. Jerry Ottaboni. Good morning, Madam Chairman and Board of Supervisors. My name is Jerry Ottaboni and I live in Oak Valley. Surprise! Well, the majority of people have spoken. They saw through the shenanigans and they didn't want any more of their tax dollars to be wasted. 
The senior citizens voted not to be taxed out of their homes, and also that you four supervisors would not have more money to spend on your pet projects. Like Supervisor Carroll stating in his campaign ad for the bonds, hunting where you are not allowed to hunt. Congratulations to the voters for this victory for common sense. It is clear that the voters want a county administrator who will place the needs of the county first and stop with the pet projects. Speaking of the waste of money, the 300000 that those who donated tens and thousands of dollars expecting millions in return to push the bonds would have been better off spending the donations to the groups who came here every week to ask for money from the bonds. It is clear that the majority of the votes want a county administrator, as mentioned on KVOA TV, who will place the needs of the county first and stop the pet projects. Pima County receives approximately 40 to 15 million from her funds. That's your gas taxes and your license plates to repair the roads, but only bits and pieces have been repaired. I was speaking to a former Oro Valley Council member and asked about their her funds. He told me they receive approximately 10 million and then they use for road preservation and road repair. If they don't have enough money, they use general funds. But he told me their priority is needs, not wants. The firemen, first the police, then the firemen, then the road, same as Miranda. Their administrator is a young, smart man who knows how to prioritize his spending within the budget. He also makes a responsible and appropriate salary for doing a great job. Under Mr. Huckleberry, the sheriffs, the firefighters, and the roads are not a priority. So, as KTOV, KV, KVOH channel reported, Mr. Huckleberry is the second highest paid salary in the United States, making 320,000 plus benefits. Three times the salary of the governor or the governor, the attorney general, and secretary of state combined in the fifth poorest city in the United States. We need to hire a new, young, energetic administrator at a reasonable salary who will work for the people of Pima County and stay within the budget and not continually raising taxes to fund their out of control spending. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Thank you, Ron Shulman. so many things for us that uh, are too numerous to mention at this point. But one thing they've given us a year ago was a set of 36 indicators called the MAP Dashboard. The MAP Dashboard talks about the health of this region in so many ways. Two indicators really tell a story for us. One is out of the 12 cities being compared, regions being compared, this region is the lowest in business growth among all 12. And that's been true over the last several years. It also is the lowest in employment growth over the last several years. That's not good enough for us. It's not good enough for our community. We all need to do better. The business leaders of Southern Regional Leadership Council are very interested in not dwelling on what just happened at the ballot box but viewing this as an opportunity and a call to action for us to join together on all sides to make a difference for this region. There's several things that have to happen and they need to happen soon. One of them is there were critical projects among those bonds that will help drive our economy. Things like the Sonoran Corridor, opportunities to, to fix our roads. Those <coughs> solutions must be found and we may have to find a new way to do it. But I think we have to do it together. The second thing is, you as supervisors, the other elected officials of all of our communities, it's time for us to take a very aggressive posture when it comes to economic growth. Take a hard look at the barriers to growing our economy. Let's reduce regulation where it's appropriate. Let's minimize <coughs> obstructions to business growth and development. 
Let's do the things that can attract those businesses, grow the current businesses, and make this community what we all want it to be. The truth is, we'll have the community we can afford. And we can afford that community if we grow the economy, which generates the revenues to improve it. So let's not spend too much time dwelling on what just happened. Let's join together the entire community in finding a new path forward. Thank you. Thank you. Verdana Kadouts. Pronounce it for me. I know I mangled it. Kadouts. Okay. Good morning. First of all, I would like to thank Allie Miller for her support of the Pima County taxpayers that continue to be outraged with the volume of panhandling bay grants that fill our medians and our street corners who leave behind trash and drug paraphernalia. When taxpayers paid for road improvements at Ina and La Cholla, we didn't expect a homeless camp to replace the houses that were torn down for a greenbelt area. At Ina and La Cholla, and also at Ina and La Cunada, drivers have been victimized by individuals urinating and defecating on public sidewalks in full view of drivers and passengers. At Ina and La Cholla, often those passengers are children from the Donaldson Elementary School, which is only one block away from this homeless camp that has been at Ina and La Cholla. Business owners come to work finding feces on their doors and walls of their property and on their vehicles. The Sheriff's Department essentially ignores the situation, citing a lack of ordinances on the part of Pima County. Yet Tucson, or Valley, Marana, even DPS at the corridor of Oracle Road have addressed the vagrant problem. It is time for Pima County to address the issue of squatters residing on public property. It is not a lack of resources for the homeless. When a homeless individual can earn in excess of $100 a day, tax-free, with no responsibility of property taxes for the homeless camps, they are not motivated to seek the resources in our community. While the rest of us work hard just to be continuously subjected to increasing property taxes for our homes. The public spoke to the board last week by a resounding no on all, board, um, all bond propositions, which demonstrates to this board can no longer be trusted with the management of our public funds. I noticed a poster promoting the bonds that stated, invest in ourselves. The sign should have rest, invest in Huckleberry's bank account, as he is the only one that has benefited from the higher property taxes. The board continues to exhibit a lack of oversight of public funds by increasing Chuck Huckleberry's salary to an unjustified exorbitant amount. Mr. Huckleberry, I hope your heirs enjoy the millions that you've accumulated at the expense of modest taxpayers and county employees who have not seen raises in years. Thank you. Good morning, Pima County. I'm Richard Hernandez. Have you ever made something from scratch, let's say in Guanales? You know, you add a dash of this and a tab of that. You look at it and you say, boy, it looks good. And then you realize after you take a bite, you say, damn, this is good. Well, rejecting the bonds should feel good. You saved yourself millions and millions and millions and millions. I actually stood right here and said, there are some good projects on those bonds. But I also said, there's a bunch that didn't belong there. I believe the problem with Pima County and in my short year and a half of coming here has been this board is about the few and not you and not you and not you. That's the problem with this board and its administrator is it's been about the few. So I'm going to ask you to join me in the next 11 months and a couple days. We're going to make something new from scratch. First of all, so that you know, we're going to terminate Chuck Huckleberry. Let's get rid of this spice. <laughs> the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of some of this bitterness. Let's get rid of Sharon Bronson. Let's move towards negativity. 
Ray Caro. Then we've got Ramon. By, for the record, he's in my district. I don't really know what he does, but if you're not in the good, to help for the good of you and you, let's add him to the list. And finally, the sweetness, the bitter sweetness. I'm going to add Richard to this list, the one person I'm most reluctant to add. We need to create a new Pima County. Look at Chuck, folks. Take a look at him. Everybody look at him. This is what he does when I talk. He ignores me. He doodles. He doesn't listen to the public. But the public just spoke. We've had 20 years of poor management. Let's move on. You're right. We need to combine. But we need to come together for the good of you and you and you and not the few. That's what Pima County needs. That's the direction we need to move in. So as we get ready for 2016, get ready, there's going to be a lot of fairy dust thrown out there by these folks. You're going to hear a lot of things. They're going to take just a micro of truth and embellish it so it looks good. You saw right through it, Pima County. Enjoy that money in your pocket. Let's move together to do the things we need to do, not the things we want to do. Thank you. Have a good Thanksgiving. And if you're blessed enough to have abundance, will you do me a favor? Do our community a favor. Help someone who doesn't. Be good to somebody else. Because community is what makes this place a special place for everybody. Thank Happy you. Thanksgiving to everybody. My fun. Good morning, Madam Chair, County Supervisors, and County Administrator Huckleberry. My name is Mike Barney. I'm the President and CEO of the Tucson Metro Chamber. We are the largest business organization in Southern Arizona, representing 1,450 businesses and their 150,000 employees. I'm here to thank the members of the board and the County Administrator and County Administrator Huckleberry for providing the voters of Pima County with a chance to invest in their community and an economic expansion at last Tuesday's election. As many people are aware, the Tucson Metro Chamber Board of Directors strongly supported passage of all seven bond measures. And we are naturally disappointed that improvements to our roads, protection to, of our major employers, helping our unemployed neighbors gain meaningful employment, improve flood control, promotion of tourism, Arts and culture and all of the other measures in the bond package did not meet with voter approval. One week after the election, we all have the luxury of hindsight. Those who are prone to do so, do so will offer their woulda, shoulda, and coulda explanations for, what, for the way the votes fell. However, one thing is sure. Because of the defeat of the bond package, it appears that what's ahead for Pima County may be more of the same. Thanks to polling and survey work conducted by the Chamber, we know that businesses want county roads fixed and they want them fixed now. We also know that how those road improvements get funded is nowhere near as, uh, as important to these employers as fixing the roads now. Takeaways I have from the election tell me that sowing fear and misinformation to encourage a no vote is easy. Getting the facts and making an informed decision makes earning the yes vote that much more difficult. Sure, taxes would rise to support the bond package, but isn't $18 a month for bar a bargain for better roads, protecting Raytheon, setting the table for economic expansion, enhancing our arts and cultural assets, growing tourism and protecting our neighbors who need flood control worth it? Blurring the facts about Pima County debt made it seem like our county is some kind of tax island when the total tax burden is nearly identical between Pima County and Maricopa County. And while distrust of government is widespread across our country, when it comes to fulfillment of the voters' direction on bond measures, a panel of state auditors concluded that Pima County does it as well or better than any county in the state. It's interesting to note that on the same day that Pima County voters were shooting down 
the bond questions that Maricopa County voters were busy approving their local bond questions. Their mantra, attract jobs, protect property values. That's pretty nice. So the voters have spoken. Now it will be interesting to see what happens next. Defeat of the bond questions does not solve our community issues or enhance our community assets. Now is the time for us to come together with new plans for progress, economic expansion, and job growth. And I thank you very much. Jimmy McDermott. Hi everybody, I'm Jude McDermott and I live in the city of Tucson and Pima County. Moved here from Los Angeles about 22 years ago. Thought I'd live here about a year and I absolutely love it here. I love the people. I love Chuck Huckleberry. I love all the Pima County Board of Supervisors and everything they tried to do for us to put the bond package on the ballot. And we, had, we got to vote and some people voted yes, some people voted no. A lot of people did vote yes. And I want to just make every, everything clear today in a statement to the public that until I was involved, in, involved with the bonds and understanding and reading about it and going to all the meetings and learning how it, how it happened, that there was a community of all these community volunteers that put the bond package to the vote and took it to the supervisors. And the supervisors had the cojones to put it on the ballot. And that's what you did. And people voted no. So what I don't like about here today, I'm missing my work. I, I'm in the nonprofit world. We put on the golf tournament here to raise money for kids to play sports. And we're not practicing the nine core values that we teach with our first C program. We're not practicing any civility. We're not practicing honesty. We're not practicing courtesy. I mean, I'm, I'm appalled at what I'm seeing here. And um, I just want to say I support Chuck and all the board of supervisors and all the people that, that were on the package and on the committee because until I was involved with it and went to some meetings, I didn't realize how the bond actually got on the ballot. And it was all done by our community and uh, a lot of community volunteers that have been here. And it's a shame that it didn't pass, but let's go to Plan B, as Mike Barney said. And that's all we can do. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Beth Hargrove. Thank you for the opportunity to speak this morning. I'm going to be a second person speaking on the panhandling issue that Allie Miller has been so wonderful in taking care and listening to our community. And we appreciate that, Supervisor Miller. Um, I'm going to ask the rest of the Board of Supervisors for your support, along with Supervisor Miller, in getting an ordinance regarding panhandling for the community Iowa is in the Latoya corridor. The, the neighborhood showed up in in droves on the night on the 29th of October. Channel nine was there, or channel four was there. Channel 13 covered the meeting as well, um, because we're concerned for our community. We're concerned for our safety, for our health and well-being, for that of our children. We can't we can't let our kids walk to the bus stop by themselves. For her, something happening to them. And that's not the community I grew up in, nor the one that I want my children and grandchildren to grow up in. Um, Lieutenant Dominguez was one of the sheriffs who spoke at the meeting and said that there had been over 200 calls to 911. That doesn't include the calls to the non emergency number, but to 911 regarding the safety of the panhandlers, the safety of the people in the medians, in the roadways, the drivers. I live and work a half a mile. I mean, I work on a business half a mile from where I live. And I don't feel safe walking to work. And that's just sad. There's another meeting coming up this month, and the neighborhood is banding together. It is a serious issue in our community and in others, from what I understand. So it could be in your district. I know it's in ours. So I'm just asking that the next time it comes up, and it will, because there's going to be a petition to let you know how many people. You know, there were 100, over 100 at the last meeting. So there are programs for these people who are homeless. They don't want to participate in them. So we all have choices, but sometimes there's consequences for those choices. 
And the consequence should be that they shouldn't be allowed to trash our community. I remember there was a phrase called Tucson Clean and Beautiful that we all were proud of. I don't hear that anymore. And looking around my community, it's not clean, nor is it beautiful. There is trash everywhere. And it's allowed. My question is why. Thank you. Thank you, Judy Wood. Good morning. My name is Judy Wood. I uh, oh, thank you very much uh, to the board for uh, allowing me this opportunity to speak. I own a business here in Tucson. Uh, where I employ about 60 people. I live in District 1. I voted for and supported all of the bond issues. I want to make Tucson a better place where we can attract business. I serve on the board of the Chamber. I serve on the board of the Arizona Commerce Authority and also a member of SALC. All of those are organizations that work hard to attract businesses, make us a business-friendly state where we can uh, increase our tax base by attracting companies and uh, jobs with high salaries. And I just want to say, Let's figure out a solution to improving the infrastructure in southern Arizona. One of the things we do at the Arizona Commerce Authority quarterly is look at why businesses didn't come to southern Arizona and Arizona at large. And one of them is the infrastructure. <laughs> and I think we need to move forward and support the, the improvement of the infrastructure. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Roger Descore. Ms. Bronson, supervisors, uh, to address uh, Supervisor Elias, your father, I honor his service. My father also served. He served this nation for 50 years. He served during World War II. I was also handed the flag at his funeral. He had preached us kids to always train our kids that freedom is a home that constantly degrades and go, goes away. That if we refuse to pick up that hammer to continuously build this freedom, we shall live in shackles. So even though your father never did pick up a firearm again, we must continue picking up the firearms, being trained on firearms, or well, we shall learn to wear the shackles of slavery. That's very important. My father once told me his first day in the Philippines, he received his paycheck. He looked at it and it was $7 for a month. That was for fighting in the Philippines, getting jungle rot in his feet and killing Japanese. That's what he received to serve, not to make profit off of the people, but to serve the people. When we would work at the church, we weren't allowed to take money because we were serving God. Now, I don't think Chuck Huckleberry's job should be a career choice. You didn't hit the lottery, Chuck. You're fleecing the citizens. This is so despicable. And all your answers have been, have been to increase taxes. Well, we don't have enough money in my household, and we don't have enough money. We cut expenses. <coughs> we find things to cut out of our budget, things our grandchildren or our children shall go without so we can pay our bills. You continually come to us, and you just think, oh, well, turn up the volume, make more money. And as far as that Chamber of Commerce goes, any of you endorsed by them are part of the policing. 
I was told by the Chamber of Commerce, we are a membership-driven organization. We have to accept bad policies from government so we can bring forth the policies that benefit our paying members. That's why they support increased taxes on business, false alarm ordinances on business that take away the rights of citizens. If anybody is a member of that chamber and I can find somebody that's not a member, I'll gladly support somebody that does not partake in the fleecing of the people. You people are on the county board of the fifth poorest city in the Sir, nation. Your time Thank has you. Expired. Michael Keith. <laughs> Michael Keith, Damian Alexander. Had to run out, I was looking for some spices. It's my own. Oh, here you go. <laughs> you know what the best spice is that I see happening here? By the way, Damian Alexander, thank you all for uh, the opportunity to speak. No. That's what I see in Pima County. I see a bunch of people out here who are saying no. It didn't matter if it was a bonds, it doesn't matter what it is, they say no. They don't want to work together. I'm challenging all of you to say yes. I don't care what it is, get involved. Be nice, you did a phenomenal job on the snow campaign. I mean, they really did a great job on getting out. Did I like the tactics? No. Oh, here I am, we'll know too. Um, we need to work together. We really need to figure a way to move forward in this county. I'm, I love this place. I love Southern Arizona. And it really hurts me to see so much negativity and so many people who don't look at facts, who weren't willing to take the time to read it. People who want to perpetuate untruths. And Chuck, I support you. I support all of you on the board. You may run for the damn board. I'm in your district. I'm really thinking about it. It would be great. Because the negativity. Anyways, here's your no back. Dave, Dave Young Cohen. Did I get your name right? You did. Thank you. Oh. It's Good. not often that somebody pronounces it correctly. Well, oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm here before the board, and I appreciate the board allowing me to come and speak. I'm one of the, I live in District 1, and I'm also here because I'm concerned about what's going on on our corners. Um, I have to tell you, besides the safety issues, and you've heard it all, I know that you, you know, I'm not going to come up and repeat what's going on. I'm just here to really say, what can I do to get you to support this so that we can have some ordinances to stop what's going on in the neighborhood? Um, recently, there was a little tent city set up right near my home. I called the police to report that there were three tents in the field. People were living there. They laughed at me. And they said, there's nothing we can do. There's no ordinances. We'll go out and check it out but you need to go before the board and the board needs to have some ordinances so we have some, you know, we have a way to be able to do something. Fortunately, that tent city is, is gone. I don't know where they've moved to, um, but they're not there anymore. But, it, but the neighborhood looks bad. Um, what's going on is awful. You pull up to a corner, you're, you're uncomfortable, you feel like you're being harassed. I mean, nobody's banging on my car windows. Nobody's, you know, doing anything toward me, but it's not even comfortable. The neighborhood, I agree, is dirty. It's unsafe. Um, I worry. I keep hearing stories within the neighborhood of, of harassment, of pedestrians, of people in, in um, the parking lots at the different businesses, and I just would like something done. And. I, I will take any advice as to what you can tell me I can do to help because I would like to see some ordinances out there to stop this. Thank you. Thank you. Keep on hand in.
morning. My name is Keith Van Reinigan. I'm a Pima County resident. I'm an artist. I'm a small businessman. This is plan B, okay? That's plan B. You've already seen phase one of plan B. Chuck Huckleberry's taxation without representation and crony capitalism has been defeated. Phase two is we unelect the four corrupt board members. And then we force the firing of Chuck Huckleberry. The next phase is we convince, simply, the state's attorney to come after you with RICO charges. Mike Varney, Joe Snell, and Jim Click, and Flex McCusker, you're going to try and tell me what the do you know what to do? I don't think so. All they are is contract, leeches. They see, oh, the government wants to do something. Let's get in on that. We'll make millions. That's all it is. It's scam. It's pathetic. You're over a billion in debt. The city of Tucson is on a glide path to be bankrupt in 18 to 36 months. Say no on this bondage package. Save the county from going bankrupt. All I can say is if next year you four are still sitting here, Chuck Huckleberry is still sitting here, I will take my family, my business, my employees, their families, their children, and we will leave. And you know what the nice thing about bankruptcy is? The way it affects the community. Usually 10 to 25 percent of your population leaves. And you did that. Long term, Mr. Huckleberry, Sharon, Ray Ray, my representative, Ramon, Richard, you did that. Not me. I pay my bills. I have good credit. You all got to come through with brain fart every once in a while. And that's what this was. Your friends, your specific friends, picking and choosing how they're going to rob the public. You have a nice day. You have a nice life. Terry we're Street. Trying. We're trying, and I'm not done yet, Sherry. We do not like the rudeness, the crudeness of our county supervisors. Really? What do you supervise? Debt? And as far as civility, you wouldn't know civility to hit you in the face. Have a nice day. Terry Shreve. Good morning, uh, members of the uh, Board of Supervisors. Uh, I am here also to speak about the safety of the uh, of my neighborhood in District 1. And I thank Allie Miller for attending the meeting that we held at the library up there. Uh, we're in the neighborhood of Casadobes West. The panhandling that is happening at the major intersections of Ina and Machoya and Ina and La Pinata uh, is affecting our homes and the area we live in. It's affecting our driving patterns and the cleanliness of the area and the well-being of the area in general. The people who are panhandling are stepping out into traffic, leaving an uh, extensive amount of litter, including uh, bottles of alcohol, uh, needles and um, it's been spoke, spoken about uh, defecation on the sidewalks and this is public we have seen it uh, there's been more um, aggressive dam handling uh, which has really been upsetting I walk in the morning and I've encountered this on several occasions uh, by the foothills mall and also it's been reported of the recent murder and beheading of a homeless woman in our area that was dumped in the uh, behind the Walgreens and I am Latroya. Um, this is threatening the security of our neighborhood, which includes Donaldson, and as stated before, in the new walkway, pathway that was, uh, the houses were raised to create, uh, I can no longer walk there in the morning because of the amount of people that sleep there in the trash, and we are, we're talking about 25 to 30 yards from Donaldson Elementary. I know that you have no action about this currently in front of you, but I ask, as others have, that you give this issue your attention as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Margie, is it Rob? Robin? 
Rabbit. Okay. Okay. First of all, I'd like to say good morning to the Board of Supervisors and thank you for this opportunity to speak. I'm Deaconess Margie Rabi with St. Mark's United Methodist Church. Oh, I should have known that. I'm sorry. In Laurel Valley. And I'm a deaconess here on behalf of the executive team uh, from Pima County Interfaith Council, otherwise known as PCIC. Uh, this is where I serve full time and for free. Uh, and I'm here to tell you I told you so. Pima County uh, Interfaith Council um, was part of the Bond Coalition and part of the Yes on Pima County Bonds team. And we're proud of the work that we put into this effort because it supports the common good. We held 35 civic academies to educate people about the bond, including at my very own church. We, talked to, uh, we walked and knocked on doors, we made phone calls, and registered people to vote. We even work with Pima Community College to register 550 of their students. We made pulpit announcements and bulletin announcements to thousands of people, and yet we lost. I personally spent most of my time telling people that we are our own worst enemies. We are constantly voting against the very things that we say we want. And so we face the fact that the bond did not pass. And I want to say to the community, I told you so. For some reason, we seem to want to do these uh, really complicated theoretical calculations what, when what is needed is a simple math equation. And that equation is when you refuse to invest in job creation that would provide more of a tax base and combine it with the need to divest from anything that entices young working people who pay taxes to remain in the state, I have to ask, why are you so surprised that we are at the bottom of the economic recovery? Because we at Pima County Interfaith Council care for the common good. And because we know that these bond issues will not go away and will now in fact cost us even more in the future, we also will be back to work with you on the bonds, to work even harder on those things that enrich our community. And you can count on that because I told you so. Thank you. Thank you. Christopher Cole. If I may say a couple of things before I start my comments. Mr. Elias, the Pima County Libertarian Party, offers sincere condolences on the death of your father. We may be political opponents, but that doesn't mean we can't be civil. Also, today is the 240th anniversary of the founding of the United States Marine Corps. Yeah. This old Air Force guy wishes happy birthday to every Marine, past and present. My name is Christopher Cole. I'm the first vice chair of the Pima County Libertarian Party. And as an officer of the Libertarian Party, and as a member of the Election Integrity Commission, the Monday before the election and the election night, I watched over counting the ballots. And pretty much I'm satisfied with how the procedure worked. The machinery that we've Got now does a very good job. It's not as fast as some people would like or think it's supposed to be, but it gets the job done. And as a matter of fact, it could really, with with the fact that it takes pictures of both sides of the ballot, it can be used to improve the audit procedures. Pima County bonds went down, and I, for one, am happy they did. A lot of the bonds were, as near as I can determine, pure cronyism. People talk about job creation and job training programs, but every study that's ever been done on the subject, government job training programs benefit only the person that's running the company. The people that go through the job training programs 
had the same employment chances as those who don't go through and the same employment rate. The job tra go government job training programs do not make it any easier for someone to get a job. The Pima County government has been mismanaging money for so long that it's kind of expected. You know, if you hadn't bought those soccer fields, you could spend that money on roads. I can't find anywhere in the state constitution or the state revised statutes that give you the authority to be involved in soccer. You know, there's soccer organizations here in the county, in the state, nationally, that could have bought those and brought soccer tournaments in here, and you would have had tax-paying property, not tax-exempt property. You would have had millions of dollars for roads. You would have had that money for roads, sewers, whatever. You need to start managing the money better. Maybe you remember about a year ago. And I, your time with it, you, you're over. The last, the last sure. little bit. Okay. okay. Maybe you remember about a year ago, I suggested that you take all of the projects that you've got, just put them in priority order, you know, from one to 10,000 or whatever. And Mr. Carroll said, well, I just accept the priorities that the, uh, the bureaucrats give me. That's quite a re-election re slogan, Mr. Carroll. Thank you for your time. Sherry Hoskinson. Good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to speak this morning. I'm here to speak uh, uh, positively about the bond issues that, despite the, fact, the outcome of the recent election, want to restate the importance uh, Parks and recreation, job training, workforce training, innovation and growth businesses, libraries, roads and transportation, outdoor life, historic preservation, cultural growth, natural areas, tourism, public health, safety, welfare, neighborhoods. All of these things represent essential curb appeal uh, and life quality for a region that is honestly competing with communities across the country and world. Uh, to achieve prosperity for all of its residents at a very minimal cost of a few dollars uh, per month for most families. Uh, having attended dozens of bond advisory county and local meetings over the, the last uh, many months, I'm sorry to say that they were almost always held during the day uh, when working families cannot attend uh, and therefore haven't had the benefit of process to fully understand the implications and therefore support by voting. And clearly their voice was not heard. They were not in voting and understanding it was important to do so. So I'm here to say that I commit to uh, working to create awareness among this population of such importance to this region and hope that we can find a way to move forward on these things that all of our families need. Thank you so much. Okay. Brunei Fisher. And I think mangled your name, I know. My name is Nicole Burleigh Fisher, and I am also here speaking to the Panhandling issue. Okay. We did have a meeting at Nanini Library on October 29th. There, the room was standing room only. There were people standing in the hallways that were not able to get in and speak to the issue. We are very concerned in our neighborhood. We have uh, drug paraphernalia, we have alcohol bottles, all of this within range of an elementary school. And it's growing by leaps and bounds. And essentially this is because there is a lack of an ordinance within unincorporated Pima County. And as such, that is moving individuals who are panhandling for a living into our area. Um, I am not insensitive to the plight of homeless. I'm a former social worker. I understand that there are significant issues at play here. I also know that Pima County is doing their part, Pima County Sheriff's Department is doing their part to extend and continue services to these individuals. Um, and largely they're declining those services. Um, but what's happening is, is that individuals are living in washes behind our, our residences. 
As you heard earlier, there was a grisly murder which resulted in a beheading and the body dumped behind um, a, a business and within range of homes. All of this needs to be tended to and we need your help with this. We've, we've gone to Supervisor Miller, she has been responsive and um, listening to our concern and we would like you to, to take this matter under advisement and look at the ordinance and protect the citizens that you are charged with protecting. I also would like to ask that these board meetings be extended into the evening hours. I'm taking time out of my business day to come here and speak on behalf of myself and my family. And other, other members who were at the meeting actually expressed their interest in coming but can't come. It could be that you could have these meetings in the evening hours when more individuals could come and speak to whatever these issues are that concern them. I'd ask that you take that under advisement. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Good morning, Chairman Bronson, members of the board. I'm here to say thank you. Uh, the voters spoke last Tuesday, but you allowed this to go to the voice of the voters. Um, the second thing I'd like to say, though, is that uh, there's one thing I've heard all the speakers agree upon today. We are a city that is poor with many needs. We need to develop a common vision. As the president of the YMCA, I work with 200,000 uh, Tucsonans and Pima County residents each year, and I can tell you it's a difficult time for families and it's a difficult time for our children. So we can't let the outcome of the vote get in the way of what can we do to positively impact the children and families uh, here locally. The second thing I'd like to say is that um, there's been much concern about operation and maintenance and things that uh, would have been impacted by the bond. And I think I want to uh, share a, a, a different idea perhaps on how we look at that. I heard Mr. Huckleberry say 15 years ago that the day of Pima County needing to solve all the problems is over and that if we can find partnerships and collaborations that are cost effective and that relieve the burden that taxpayers have, that should be our common goal. So my hope is that the bond is behind us. We're gonna look forward for a common vision and identify different ways that we can accomplish things to make Pima County a place for our children and that we're proud of. Thank you. Thank you. Cynthia Cruz. Cynthia Cruz. Good morning and uh, thank you. I'm here, one of many. I live in the Casa Civilian community. I am a homeowner. I uh, have children and I've lived in this community for, si for 16 years. And when we first moved into this community, I can't, I can't even explain to you how happy I was to raise my children there. I actually moved from one neighborhood to another neighborhood just to live in this community. And now, I don't even know if my home value is worth what it should be because of what's happening in my neighborhood. Um, and it's interesting because we've kind of taken a hit because it seems like our neighborhood is unsympathetic to those who are homeless, and that's not true at all. In fact, just like maybe half a mile to a mile away is the Interfaith Community Services right there on Ina. So if they're really homeless, there are, there are services right there on the very same street. I have pictures in my purse um, that I take daily of what goes on in our neighborhood. And so we actually do have proof. Yesterday I was heading home west on Ina and one of the penhandlers literally stepped off probably two feet into traffic just to take something from a car. This is very dangerous for them when they're standing there in 120 degrees heat out there on the asphalt, you know, it's that hot. It's dangerous. At what point will one of them pass out? I know that they're not in Tucson. I know they're not in Oro Valley. I know they're not in Miranda because they're all right there in a concentrated area. Uh, they're not making con contributions to our community. And that's what we hope all citizens do. They get in their cars, they come, they panhandle, they get back in their cars, and they go back to wherever they are. This is unsightly for our neighborhood. I have teenagers, I won't even let them walk anymore. And I know this is not the way you want your families to be raised, or your grandchildren. What they've contributed 
broken bottles, needles, dangerous intersections. Uh, on my street alone, earlier this year, there was a gentleman who was, I suppose, homeless. He squatted in one of the houses on my street, only five houses away. When the gentleman came home, here's this squatter, and he assaulted him, and we had to have the sheriff come in. We had our entire street blocked off just because they were looking for this fugitive now. This is very, very serious. And it ties back into everything that I'm hearing about taxes. I understand what it means to do more with less. I'm a retired public school teacher. I know what it means to have to perform better, faster than anybody else with less. I'm asking you, please help our neighborhood. We need this ordinance. Thank you. Kristen Adams. I'm Kristen Alquist, a resident of Tucson in Apima County, and I want to begin by, let me just say some of the words that we've heard today. Collaboration, community, volunteers, healthy, compromise, integrity, transparency. And I would like to give the kudos to Chuck Huckleberry, Dr. Garcia, your staff, Nicole, and the whole administration for your transparency through this bond election and also last bond election, which is actually why I'm here. Uh, several weeks ago, the 415 PAC campaign for the renovation and rebuilding of our PAC facility, it did pass. Michael, we said yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the neat thing is we were honored at a gala event by the Metropolitan Pima Alliance. And what they talked about uh, it celebrates projects that overcame great obstacles through collaboration, transparency, honesty. And I just want to let you know that we were in the top 10, we got the award, and yes, Pima County, we can do it. We can vote yes and we can stop saying no. And there are more, Michael, than a few. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Barbara Levy. Good morning, Chair Bronson, uh, Mr. Elias, Mr. Huckleberry. Thank you. Uh, I am Barbara Levy, uh, and having been a resident of Pima County for 43 years, I have seen incredible growth in this community, especially over the last five to 10 years. It's so no wonder that our buildings, roads, and parks are showing the wear and tear of widespread community use. Thank you to the Bond Advisory Committee for, for nine years of challenging work and to the Board of Supervisors for providing a solution to these problems. And thank you for an opportunity to ask the community to express their opinions. What's puzzling is those who chose to vote no because of cost, who evidently didn't understand or consider the following. What an amazingly low cost residents would pay for 99 projects that would provide over 6,500 jobs, attract businesses instead of losing them, stimulate our vitally important tourism, and add to our economy an additional $60 million through fundraising efforts in the private sector. What a gift to Tucson that economic impact would have been. Sadly, this vote leaves little option to our leadership, but probably to call for more taxes to fund the vital projects. When all taxes combined far exceed the bond cost to the average homeowner of all of $18 a year, I hope the naysayers won't be the loudest voice of complaint. We can expect annual rise in costs as we know that even a one-year delay will mean a greater expense. I heartily echo the voices of those who have spoken about a collaborative effort to find a solution. I'm ready. Thank you. Thank you. Larry Hecker. Remind everybody to turn off their cell phones, please.
Madam Chair, members of the board, Mr. Huckleberry, first, let me thank you for your service. And I want to apologize for the rudeness and disrespect I've heard here today. I may not agree with you, but I hope that I will always treat you with respect and dignity. Um, no one believes in the First Amendment more than I, but I would be embarrassed to have my seven-year-old grandchild here to hear the hatred and disrespect that I've heard today. You work hard, and I don't always agree, but I know that you give up a lot to serve this community, and I'm grateful. Secondly, I'd like to apologize to the thousands of people who attended dozens of meetings of the Pima County Bond Advisory Committee. They shared their views. They told us their needs. I want to apologize that we were unable to effectively deliver the message that this was a citizens-driven effort and that the bond implementation process would be subject to intense public scrutiny and oversight. This wasn't the Board of Supervisors bond program. This wasn't Chuck Huckleberry's. This was the citizens' plan. We started this process nine years ago, and we were given a list of, not, of $3 billion in projects. Not a wish list, not frills. These were essential projects that this community needs to address the growth and to attract the employers that we need. Um, since that time, this community has grown by 10%. It's going to grow by another 11%. And unless we do something to provide for the quality of life and the needs of our citizens, we're going to be left behind. The needs didn't go away with the election. The roads are still in, in disrepair. Our economy is still languishing, and, and I hear the talk about uh, panhandling. Um, to me, the, the, the best solution to panhandling is a job, and I think that's what this package would have done. It would have stimulated our economy and provided jobs for our people. Our young people are still without the parks and libraries that they need. That's going to have to be addressed. So um, I would just encourage you, don't give up. Um, there's a lot to be done. Um, please help us find a way to deal with the pressing needs of this community. And thank you again for your service. Thank you. That concludes our call to the audience. Given the length of time that took, we're going to take a short 10 minute break, reconvene at about 11 o'clock. I am going to reopen. Um, the call to the public. There were a number of people who submitted cards for items that were not, uh, that are on the agenda but are not set for public hearing. So if you wish to speak on those items, I will allow you um, several minutes. Um, and again, I'm going to reopen the call to the public uh, again because um, there are people who submitted cards to speak for items that were not advertised as hearings. And again, if you wish to speak. Um, Grace, it looks like Gomez, not Gomez. Gomez? Gomez, Gomez okay. And again, state your name for the record. My name is Dr. Gomez, and I'm representing the American Friends Service Committee today. Our group supports policies and practices that advance a fair and humane criminal justice system. Several research studies find that returning community members require family support, community assistance, and economic opportunity to prevent recidivism. Access to employment is a critical element of this network of support. Their hiring practices, including the Ban the Box policy, uh, which is resolution number 2015-80 on the agenda today, uh, can ease barriers folks with conviction histories face in security and employment. Research demonstrates that hiring discrimination takes place 76% of the time at the submission of a job application. 
and that having personal contact with a potential employer reduces the negative effect of a conviction history by 15%. Therefore, removing the impediment of a criminal record checkbox from initial applications will allow qualified job seekers to make in-person contact with hiring authorities and thus increase their odds at gainful employment. American Friends supports policies such as Down the Box because they demonstrate our greater human instincts for care and mercy. Therefore, we are hopeful that the Board of Supervisors will approve the Down the Box resolution that authorizes the removal of criminal history questions from King County's job applications. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Roger. Just go over. Supervisors, I was here to call you out on the private use and the use of county-owned vehicles. Uh, we have mothers in this city that rent places that you pose higher taxes on through your bonds. Rental taxes way higher than that of owning a property. And you always want these increased taxes on property, which directly affects these poor mothers that don't even have a vehicle. Now you're making a rather decent wage. A lot of people in Pima County would be happy to make the money you're making. And we provide our own vehicles. I don't know why the taxpayers should have to pay for your car. Maybe you need us to buy you a TV so you can watch the news when you get home and see what's going on in the world. Because obviously, you're not up to date on what we go through as citizens. You just keep posing higher and higher taxes on us, and that's a, a luxury that you should only be afforded if the whole community's doing good. Not when we're suffering in poverty and the citizens said no to the bonds, because we can't afford the bonds. Get rid of the cars, cut some of the expense. The reason we didn't pass the bonds is because we don't trust you, not because we don't need this stuff. And it's stuff like your cars that you waste our money on for your own personal gain is one of the reasons we lost trust in you. So show us something on your part that we can trust you. Dump the cars. Thank you. Thank you. Aunt Anna Henderson? Members of the board, uh, Madam Chair, Administrator Huckleberry, uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak in front of you. I would like to speak about check the box as well. I'm in opposition while on the surface. I think this is something that has a, a nice sympathetic view to it. I am concerned. I spend most of my time in the community speaking to actual people in the community. And from what I've heard today, I'm very concerned about how much time you're out in the community because it sounds like this is indicative of another situation where you're not seeing what's going on and addressing it, and yet you're concerned with something like this. This is why you have an HR department. There is no reason why there shouldn't be full disclosure. I think that there's a whole situation of dumbing down that's going on. We're seeing this in education. We're seeing how people aren't being respected for their jobs and their value, and when you cite in your plan that this is part of your economic development plan to end poverty requiring infrastructure and education, I would say, is the economic plan. This is a symptom of a problem, whereas we don't have a vibrant economy, we don't have the infrastructure, which is your primary responsibility, safety for the public, taking care of the infrastructure, and that's where the money should be going. So we, when we transition to all of these other symptoms of the problem, such as the math, basic math problem I heard for the bond. Well, if we had a vibrant economy and balance for what is the private sector versus the public sector, we would have the economic development, the funding, the good schools, the attraction to bring employers here, passing a false situation of a bond initiative so that we can pick winners and losers again within the confines of the current infrastructure does not restore that balance, does not bring the community prosperity and economic development. That is a falsehood. Every time you say that you're going to yeah, create jobs, 
the government isn't here to create jobs. The government is here to create, create a system of an environment of opportunity. And the infrastructure is how you create that, not bonds. Bonding is taxes, and you cannot keep taxing the current ba tax base and expect that you're going to grow the economy. That is the math problem. It's very simple, very straightforward. And the word transparency does not come in shades. I'm a graphic designer, I'm a business owner, and it's either opaque or shades of opaqueness. Transparency is transparency. And for all of the Marines, I say happy birthday. Their motto is Semper Fi. I say simplify. Thank you. Alonzo Barato. Madam Chair, uh, members of the Board of Supervisors, I'm here to speak about uh, Band the Box. Um, I, I just wanted to let you know that this isn't a liberal issue, and it's not a conservative issue, it's a moral issue. Um, there's so many people out there that have paid their, their debt to society, and yet when they're out there looking for work, which we what is what we want them to do, then they have to check an old box and then they're automatically thrown out and they don't even have a chance to help their families. This is an economic issue. It's an economic issue for the families because these people can't go out and look for work if, if they have this label on them all the time and stuff. So we ask you, I work for uh, the Prima Vera Foundation and we get a lot of people that come through the process that have some type of record. And it's very tough for them to look for work. But yet we request that they go out and look for work and that they get a job and stuff. And we want them to get a job, and they want to get a job, but because they have to check off the box. And then with this box, they call it delay the box, because eventually you're gonna look at it, and, and uh, you know they're, they're gonna find out that these people have had a record and stuff like that, and maybe they won't get a job, but what we're looking for is a fair chance for them. And we ask you to uh, please uh, pass item number 23, that Thank you. Thank you, Art Mendoza. Thank you. Good morning, board. Um, Chair Bronson, my name is Art Mendoza. I'm the president of SEIU Arizona. Um, I wasn't planning on, on, on really speaking today, but but I do want to just um, you know make make my comments. We did support the bond election. Um, we, we were sorry to see it, it go down because I do think there were so many projects in there that are important to our community. But, um, but more importantly, we're here to say, you know, we're ready for uh, the next steps and to, to take the next steps forward and to figure it out. Um, that didn't work. It was a, a demonstration of democracy. Um, but we're, we're ready to figure out how we can improve this, this county and how we can improve this community. Um, ourselves and, and with, with the members we represent in SEIU Arizona. Um, and, and, you know, all across the country uh, today, it's a national day of action um, where low wage workers in fast food restaurants, um, home care, child care, uh, are, are taken to the streets to really uh, stand up for their right to a living wage. Um, and it's, it's something we believe that um, our community needs. Um, and it's, it's one of the steps we're taking to help move this, this uh, um, our communities forward. I think at Pima County, well, we know uh, folks aren't making living wages. I think in county employment, folks aren't making living wages, and we'd like to start addressing that as well. Um, and another step that we want to take to help move things forward is, is we do want to support this, uh, this band of box initiative. I think it's, it's a, a great opportunity for the counties to take a step to, to help those who want to get back into the workforce, um, but th there, there are obstacles standing in their way, and this is a great thing that we can do to, to start moving forward. And so SEIU Arizona just wants to say that we're um, ready to work with the county to, to move things forward. So, thank, you. thank you. Andy Silverman. Thank you. I'm Andy Silverman. I, uh, I'm the faculty at the University of Arizona Law School and uh, director of a program called the Civil Rights Restoration Plan. I'm here to talk about Ban the Box, but a little differently. Um, Chuck Huckleberry's memo, I think, sets out the problem well, but I want to put a personal side to it, in really, in two regards. One concerning 
my son, and secondly, concerning the clients we represent through our clinic. My son spent five years in the Arizona State Prison. When he got out of prison, he went to college and he graduated to come laude. You would think he could get a job. It took him many years before he was able to get a job. Why? Each time that he marked on a job application that he had a criminal conviction, it never went anywhere. He never was even offered in many jobs the courtesy of, of any kind of consideration of an interview. Not only, one day my son came to me and he said, Dad, I feel like I am serving a life sentence. When is it over? When have I paid my debt to this society? Well, it took him many years. I hear this story every day when people call to seek the services of the Civil Rights Restoration Clinic. And they say the same thing my son says. They couldn't, they, they're calling because they can't get a job. What can be done? Now the band of box isn't a panacea. It doesn't guarantee a job for someone with a criminal conviction. It levels the playing field. It at least gives them a chance to be considered as other applicants. And then once they're considered, once maybe they're given an interview, an employer may say, well, you know, yes, I know this person has a criminal conviction, but I'm willing to give them a chance because they've met them, they've interviewed them, they've looked at their uh, experience and their ability to do the job. That's all we're asking for. President Obama has banned the box for the federal government. The Koch brothers have banned the box for their industries. So when when have President that. Obama and the Koch brothers ever been on the same page? <laughs> so as Alonzo said, this is not a liberal and conservative issue. This is a human issue that, that we need to do something about. I've learned in the eight years that I've directed the Civil Rights Restoration Clinic that today the most discriminated group in our society are people with criminal convictions. And it's not that we owe them anything, but it's to our advantage that they're able to work. So I hope that you support the proposed resolution uh, that's on the agenda today. Thank you. Thank you. And I would note for the record that um, the county attorney has submitted a letter. Ms. Kramer, if you want to come forward and make a few comments. Thank you, Chair Bronson, members of the Board of Supervisors. Um, I'm Amelia Kramer, Barbara Lawal, uh, County Attorney Chief Deputy. And uh, Barbara is supporting Ban the Box resolution because it supports the Drug Treatment Alternative to Prison Program it supports the drug course and it supports the Mark MacArthur Foundation Safety and Justice Initiative that this county is working towards and all of the criminal justice agencies in Pima County are working towards. Um, many of the individuals that we prosecute in our office are violent and dangerous predators and they belong in prison. And many of them are those whom we wouldn't want to employ. But there's also a large number of individuals who are drug addicted and mentally ill. And we need alternatives to incarceration for those individuals. And those who are incarcerated when they come back into the community and re-enter need jobs. And if we can't give them legitimate law-abiding jobs, they're going to have no choice but to go back to something illicit, illegal. So this resolution that you're considering to ban the box would be a uh, great promotion of the opportunities for rehabilitation for those individuals who can re-enter our society and have hope for that society. Thank you. All right, we will resume our regular board agenda. We are now Board of Supervisors sitting as other board. We have